What's happening, everybody? And welcome to today's edition of Swag Talk, the show where we cover the swag inside and out. I'm your host, Steve Wells, coming at you. And we're going to go ahead and recap week seven, man. We are we have completed seven weeks of swaction. Um, the season is moving along pretty rapidly. We are heading into the last two weeks of October. Um, homecoming season is upon us. And there's been some good games, there's been some bad games, there's been some blowouts, there's been some upsets. There's been a whole gambit of action that you can think of, and that's why I like to call this action because it's always unpredictable. And um, before we get started, as usual, you can check out the socials down, down below on the screen. Uh, feel free to hit those up um, if you would like to donate a little money to the cause, help the growth of the show. Um, you can hit the cash app, dollar sign slash swag talk. And, I mean, excuse me, dollar sign swag talk. You can hit that up. Um, you want to drop a little money in the collection plate this Sunday. Might be much appreciated. Um, I ain't even going to hold you, man. I, as you can tell, my demeanor is a whole lot better than last Sunday, man. When, at the TSU defeated my Jag, I was very, very out of it. Um, I was not feeling the best, man. I had a rough night. Um, much better night tonight. Uh, this morning, so hey, I'm all in and I'm I'm good, man. You see my smile on my face, and I'm not, you know, I'm not even gonna hold you, man. I I, I was just, you know, I'm I'm amp. Jacks had a good game, a lot of good action this weekend, and we're gonna cover all of it. Um, we're gonna start actually with the Gremlin, uh, Texas Southern game, which was a a a, a battle of the young QBs, man, and these were two guys two freshman quarterbacks who came in and kind of made their mark early. Um, Andrew Body from Texas Southern had a huge game against Southern, had a nice game against Rice and played well in the North American game and was, was doing really well. And Noah Biden from Gremlin was up, kind of up and down, but, you know, he has a bright future. So these are two quarterbacks who really have, have you know, have an opportunity to make their mark on the season. So, this game was kind of a surprisingly good game because both teams had got an upset um, at the beginning uh, in the mid part of the season. Grambling defeating Alabama and them, uh, Texas Southern defeating Southern last week. So this led to some some big things that could possibly have, you know, made this game a lot more exciting than, than predicted. And Grambling, as you can see, took care of business with a score of 34 to 20. Um, they led this game pretty much the whole way. Texas Southern did score first. Uh, Jaron Johnson caught a 21-yard pass from Andrew Body, and then Gramlin would go on to score the next 27 points and take a 27 to six lead in the third quarter. So Gramlin really took control of this game in the second and third in the second and third quarter, and um, put this game away. Texas Southern was able to score two fourth quarter touchdowns, um, and then Gramlin um, was able to throw a touchdown in between those two to basically hold off the Tigers and um pick up this victory for Gramlin. So a lot of different a lot of different type of scores. There was a uh Gramlin had a pick six for a touchdown and a scoop and score for a touchdown. Texas Southern had a scoop and score for a touchdown as well. So three defensive touchdowns in this game. Gramlin kicked uh three two field goals. And, you know, they didn't really – Texas Southern still, you know, carried themselves well offensively. I thought they played they played fairly well. If you look at the numbers, Texas Southern had 117 yards rushing on the afternoon, um, 3.6 – yards per carry and one touchdown. Gremlin ran for 78 yards on the night, uh, 2.2 yards per carry and two touchdowns. So neither team really, you know, wowed anybody on the ground, but Gremlin continues to not put up big numbers. Um, offensively, uh, 245 yards passing for Texas Southern, 24 of 40, one touchdown, two interceptions. So this was, you know, probably the worst game that Body has played, and the numbers aren't that bad. But, you know, I mean, he's been playing very well, so this was kind of a dip a little bit. Um, but, you know, he still he still played well. Gremlin, 18 of 34 passing, no touchdowns, three interceptions on the night, uh, 168 yards, so not a good a good game passing for Gramlin. Barely over 50% completion rate. Total offense, 362 for Texas Southern. Um, 4.8 yards per play. They fumbled three times and lost all three, giving them five turnovers on the on the game. Gramlin, 246 yards on 70 plays, 3.5 yards per play. They fumbled once and lost it. 
So that gives Grambling four turnovers, nine combined turnovers in this game. This was a sloppy, sloppy game. Texas Southern nine penalties for 81 yards. Grambling, no penalties at all. Um, some people had some questions about that, but, you know, hey, what can you do, right? Uh, punting, Texas Southern punting for an average of 28 and a half yards per punt. Grambling, 33.2 yards per punt. Time of possession, Texas Southern, 27 minutes and 6 seconds, 32 minutes and 54 seconds for a Grambling. Third down conversion, Texas Southern, 6 of 16. Grambling, 6 of 15, so pretty even there. 1 of 3 on fourth down for Texas Southern. Grambling didn't attempt a fourth down. Um, red zone, Texas Southern was 1 for 3 in the red zone. Grambling was 4 for 6. Texas Southern, 2 sacks. Grambling, 4. Individually, Texas Southern was led by Andrew Body. He was 16 of 26, 172 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. He was sacked four times. So, like I said, not a really good night for him. Uh, Jalen Brown came in. He went 8 of 13 for 73 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions, no sacks. And Sawyer Evans was 1 0 for 1 on the night. So, again, you know, this is probably one of those games where, you know, when you're a young team, you know, you have a good win. Um, against a team that you probably should not have beaten, but you did. Uh, then you come back and you kind of fall back a little bit um, with turnovers and sacks and put yourself in a bad position against a team who is probably more on the level that you are on right now. But, you know, these are the kind of games that you have to win if you want to climb the ladder. Uh, Noah Biden, 15 of 30 on the night, 156 yards, no touchdowns, two interceptions. He was sacked once. Alden Clark came in and went three for four for 12 yards. And an interception and one sack. Andrew Body led the Texas Southern Tigers in rushing with 10 carries for 55 yards. Um, Kevin Harris, 12 carries, 35 yards. Jeff Proctor, 10 carries, 18 yards. CJ Russell led Gramlin with nine carries for 41 yards. Elijah Walker, seven carries, 32 yards, and a touchdown. Cash Foley, one carry for 20 yards. Uh, Daquez Brutton, nine carries, 18 yards. Jaron Johnson led Texas Southern with six catches for 70 yards and a touchdown. Elian Davis, five catches, 63 yards. Jonathan Giles, seven catches, 52 yards. Greg White led Groundland with five catches for 73 yards. Daryl Clark, three catches, 28 yards. Kobe Ross, four catches, 21 yards. Uh, Darrell James, tw two catches, 20 yards. Josh Murray led Texas Southern with Tackles, Julian Marcantel also has six. Uh, Javius Williams, five. Calvin Henderson, five. Michael Badajo, four. Uh, Demontario Anderson, four. Matthew Williams, four. Tackles for loss. Texas Southern was led by Drew Robinson with one and a half. Badajo, one. Uh, Henderson, one. Martinez, one. Tisdale, one. And Marcantel, a half a tackle for loss. Tackles were by Badajo and Martinez. Interceptions went to Tyreek Cooper, Matthew Williams, and Isaiah Hamilton. Uh, Battle Joe also had a forced fumble on the night. Texas Gramlin was led by uh, Marqu Marquez Britton with six tackles. Matt, uh, Lewis Matthews with six. Keenan Fontenot and Quinn Mitchell with five. Xavier Lowe, Josh Reed, uh, Anderson, and Blake Thomas all had four tackles. Tackles for loss. Gramlin had a Bunch of guys with one tackle for loss apiece. They had one, two, three, four, five. Seven guys with one tackle for loss apiece. And then Foster and Matthews each had a half a tackle for loss. So really nice game for them making um some plays in the backfield by their defense. Um, four sacks on the night. Anderson, Vaughn, Sheffield, and Carter each had a sack apiece. Anderson had two forced fumbles, and Carter had one forced fumble. Uh, interceptions went to Matt, uh, Mitchell, who returned his 75 yards for a touchdown. And then Asidu also had an interception. So this was a probably a game kind of what you would expect from these two teams. This was a very sloppy game. Like I said, nine total turnovers. Um, neither quarterback really set the world on fire. But Gramlin scored two defensive touchdowns in this game. Um, got a couple field goals. And offensively, Gramlin is still not, not there. Um, I thought they would play better against the Texas Southern defense because Texas Southern has not been great on defense. But Gremlin still has problems moving the ball, whether it's on the ground or through the air. 
Um, Grambling's defense is kind of a, a underrated defense. Um, they're not obviously not a top defense, but they're a mid-level defense, and they can cause you some problems if you aren't careful. So Grambling did a good job of taking advantage of the situation that was ahead of them and scoring those non-conventional touchdowns and getting, you know, really solid play from your team and doing what you had to do to pick up that homecoming victory. So nice win by Grambling, Texas Southern, um, kind of came back down after the win against Southern, and now they can kind of go back to the drawing board and figure out a couple of things and make some adjustments and see where they go um, for their next game. So pretty solid effort for Grambling, another, another win. So they're picking up some wins here and there. And um, they're looking um, they're looking pretty good right now, um, for the way that their season started off. Uh, the next game that I want to talk about is Alcorn and Gremlin. Um, Alcorn was able to get the victory over Gremlin by a score of twenty four to twelve. This was a game that all uh, kind of similar to the Gremlin Alcorn game, where Alcorn kind of took control of the game and, and then and then had to kind of hold off. But Valley is obviously a team that's going to be competitive. Valley is no – well, at least at this point, Valley is not that Valley that just, that's just going to lay down. They just, they're just going to fight and fight till they can't go. Um, Alcorn was able to basically take control of this game early um, with a 14 uh, – Alcorn went up 17-6 uh, to six in the third quarter. And then uh, Valley scored uh, six points to make the score 17 to 12 before Alcorn closed the game out on a Nico Duffy touchdown run from 16 yards out with three and, uh, about three and a half minutes left in the game to give Alcorn the final margin. So just again, this this is kind of like what Alcorn is right now. They're a team who is basically, you know, finding ways to win. They're not really blowing the doors off of anybody, but they're playing solidly. Uh, the running game is starting to pick up steam, and the passing game is always going to be there uh, to get them out of trouble and to make some plays for them. And the defense is getting, you know, is getting better. Um, they're not, you know, they aren't really getting gashed like they did as much against um, North Carolina Central in the beginning of the UAPB game. So they're starting to improve. And, you know, Alcorn is becoming a team that, you know, later in the season you don't really want to face. Um, they know how to win. You know, the coaching staff knows how to win. And these guys understand that, you know, how you start is important, but how you finish is even more important. So you just build week by week and, and you just keep yourself in games and then you, you know, you, you deliver at the end. So um, another pretty solid effort for Alcorn. Valley, again, fought hard. Uh, Alcorn, 208 yards on the ground, 4.1 yards per carry, two touchdowns. Valley, 142 yards rushing. 3.9 yards per carry. All corn 15 to 25 through the air. 145 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. Valley, 8 of 24, passing 70 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. If you're a Valley, you know, you have to, you have to be able to throw the ball. Um, they don't throw they don't throw deep. That's that's not their thing. So they have to be able to get the ball out to those receivers on screens. And work the middle of the field um, with slants and uh, hit the backs out the backfield to kind of spread you out to allow you, them to run the ball a little bit better. But that obviously didn't happen in this game. This was that ballet passing game that I always dread that would happen. Uh, a really poor effort on the night for them passing. And it, it forced them to have to run the ball. And ballet can not really the type of team to just line up and run at you. So it, this was kind of a tough game for them. Uh, total offense three fifty three on the on the night for Alcorn, four point six yards per carry. They did fumble twice, but didn't lose any of them. They had seven penalties for sixty five yards. Valley, two hundred and twelve yards of offense, three point five yards per play, no fumbles. So this was a clean game, no in a clean game turnover wise, no turnovers for either team. Uh, six penalties for forty six yards for Valley, so thirteen penalties on the night for both teams. Uh, hundred and like one hundred and eleven yards. So not really, um, not really many uh, penalties or, or fumbles and turnovers. So this is a fairly clean game. Alcorn thirty-three and a half yards per punt. Valley thirty-nine. Teams combined for seven punts. So again, pretty just a pretty steady game. You know, not really a lot going on. 
uh, time of possession, all coin 36 minutes and 38 seconds. Valley, 23 minutes and 22 seconds. All coin 9 of 18 on third down. Uh, Valley, 3 of 14. All coin with 2 of 4 on fourth down. Valley, 0 for 3. Uh, red zone, Valley, uh, Valley with 2 for 2. All coin 3 of 4. Two stacks for all coin, three for Valley. Individually, Felix Harper, 15 of 25, 145 yards, a touchdown. No interceptions. He was sacked three times. Jelani Easton, 8 of 24, 70 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. He was sacked twice. Nico Duffy, 18 carries, 138 yards, and one touchdown. Felix Harper, 10 carries, 53 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, Stafford Anderson, 19 carries, 41 yards. So Alcorn is getting, you know, they're starting to get their ground game going. And that, that makes them a dangerous team. Uh, Caleb Johnson, 22 carries, 123 yards. So he did his job. I mean, like I keep saying, you know, this guy is one of the top backs in the swag. Um, I think a lot of people need to start paying more attention to him. Um, I obviously plan for Valley. You know, what he does gets lost in the shuffle because they don't win a lot. but this guy is able to run the ball against pretty much anybody they play. Um, he He's a nice back, and I think, you know, you really need to keep an eye out on him. Um, I would love to say, and it, this is not fair to Valley, but, man, I would love to say somebody needs to get this get this kid in the portal um, when, it's, when, it, when his time is pretty much up in Valley. Uh, maybe he can go somewhere else and get a little bit of notoriety, but, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, Valley – he should leave Valley. I'm just saying that it would be interesting if he was to enter the portal at some point um, because playing for somebody else, getting that notoriety, putting up the number that he does would, would be worth the effort that he puts up. But he does the job for Valley. Um, they try to work hard to get him his carries and they try to get him out of space. So he does he does the job for them. Uh, the Charles Pringle for all coins, six catches, 55 yards, and a touchdown, C.J. Bowler, two catches, 41 yards. Nico Duffy, three catches, 21 yards. Uh, Detavious Porter led Valley with one catch for 29 yards. Malik Myers, two catches, 24 yards. Ja'Cory Rankin, two catches, 13 yards. Solomon Wise led Alcorn with seven tackles. Uh, Macarius Blunt and Juwan Taylor, six tackles apiece. Derek Travis, five tackles. Ja'Cory and Wren, five, five tackles. Christopher Dagry, four tackles. Cherilis, four tackles. And Haran, four tackles. Also, Damian Anderson and Trevor James with four tackles. Tackles for loss. Haran, one and a half. Cherilis, Barfield, and Wise each had a tackle for loss apiece. James, Monroe, Anderson, Blunt, and Wren, Kinsler, and Martin all have uh, a half a tackle of loss apiece. Sex, uh, Haran with one, James. And Monroe each had a half a sack apiece. Uh, Jaron Fox led Valley with 14 tackles. Markel Gladney with 12. Bumis Poignier with 10. Jeremiah Crane with 10. So four guys with double-digit tackles. Um, Alcorn kept them busy. Gar Jerry Garner, eight tackles. Jalen Bell, six. Martin, Bloodsaw, Lewis, and Rollins each had four tackles apiece. Poignier, three and a half tackles for loss. Crane, one and a half. Thomas, one and a half. Mathis, one. Uh, Fox, Rollins, and Garner each had a half attack on the loss of peace. Sex went to Thomas with one and a half. Crane, Kane, excuse me, with one. And Rollins with a half attack for loss. Pretty, pretty by the book game. You know, nothing, uh, nothing spectacular for um, either team. But all court continues to roll. Valley is um, still playing well. They're just they, they, you know, they had a two-game winning streak that got snapped in this game. So they, they have had some success in the later portion of the season. Um, I, I expect them to, you know, play, continue to play hard. Um, their schedule gets a little bit tougher. Um, at this portion, um, of the season, so they're gonna have some, some really tough, um, tough, 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 uh, times ahead of them. But I think they can, they can make it through, um, if they continue to play, play hard. So. Valley is, is a team that I, I really enjoy watching play. I think they um they can be a problem for people moving moving ahead. So we're gonna move on to our next game. As now my stuff is acting crazy. 
But um, our next game that I want to talk about is Bethune Cookman and Prairie View. Bethune Cookman dropped a 35 to 28 decision to Prairie View on Saturday. All right, everybody, I'm back, man. I had a little bit of technical difficulties right there, man. Computer is acting kind of crazy. But um, I'm back, and we're going to continue with this show. Um, we're going to talk about the Prairie View Bethune-Cookman game. Like I said, Bethune-Cookman is on a, a tremendous slide. Um, they dropped to 0-7 on Saturday with a 35-29 loss to Prairie View. One thing I will say about Bethune-Cookman is they fall behind. And they always managed to come back and make the game look closer than what it is. And this was another one of those type of games. Although this game was more so that more so they just battled and fought a little bit and could not close out the deal. Uh, Purview went up early, uh, seven nothing. Um, Bethune Cookman was able to take an eight seven lead. Uh, then Purview scored the next two touchdowns to go up twenty one to eight in the third quarter. Halftime score was fourteen to eight. Uh, third quarter, Prairie View went up 21-8. Bethune Cookman made it 21-15. Prairie View went up 28-15. Bethune Cookman came back and made it 28-22. Prairie View made it 35-22. And then Bethune Cookman scored a touchdown with three and a half, three minutes and 57 seconds left in the game to make the final margin 35-29. So this game was a competitive game. Bethune Cookman was pretty much in it all game. Uh, Prairie View was able to to, to just find a way to win this game and hold off. Bethune Cookman, a really good outing on the ground for them, 242 on the night, both 5.5, 5.4 yards per carry and two touchdowns. So a really good night running the ball. Um, Purvis defense hasn't really given a lot up on the ground. So that was kind of a surprising effort there. But, you know, per, uh, um, Bethune Cookman is a team that can run the ball um, at times. So they had some success in that. Um, Prairie View, 132 yards rushing, 4.4 yards per carry, no touchdown. Passing Prairie View, 16 of 23 on the night, 290, three touchdowns, no interceptions. Bethune Cookman, 256 through the air, 17 of 34, two touchdowns and two interceptions. Prairie View, 422 yards, uh, eight yards per play, two touchdowns. Let me see, with two fumbles, and they lost them both. They had six penalties for 55 yards. Bethune Cookman, 498 total offense, 6.3 yards per play. They fumbled three times and didn't lose any. So they kind of dodged the bullet on that. But this was a game Bethune Cookman played very well offensively in, in, all, in, in both phases, running and passing. Uh, the pass, the, the completion percentage could have been better, but uh, those two interceptions definitely hurt a lot. Prairie View punted the ball for an average of 44 yards per punt. Bethune Cookman, 42 yards per punt. Time of possession, Prairie View, 25 minutes and 26 seconds. Bethune Cookman, 34 minutes and 34 seconds. So Bethune Cookman dominated time of possession. Three of 10 for Prairie View on third down, no fourth down attempts. Bethune Cookman, three of 12 on, on third down and one for two on fourth down. So as you can see, you can pretty much see what did Bethune Cookman in, in this game. The turnovers and the poor third down conversions. Uh, that did them in. If, if either one of those numbers are, are better, they probably win this game. So they played a, this was probably one of their better efforts um, to compete with a team who right now is in first place in the West Division. Um, but again, a loss is a loss. Purview was 0 for 3 in the red zone. So that, that doesn't happen very often for teams that win. Uh, but Thune Cookman was 3 or 5 in the red zone. Purview had 3 sacks, but Thune Cookman no sacks. So you can, like I said, you can pretty much see what hurt Bethune Cookman. Uh, Jawan passed 15 of 22, 227, two touchdowns, no interceptions, no sacks. Uh, Devin Black came in in reserve for um, San Patrick. He was 11 of 18, 202, two touchdowns, and one interception. He was sacked twice. San Patrick, 6 of 16, 54 yards, no touchdowns, one interception. He was sacked once. Jaden Stewart led Prairie View with eight carries for 91 yards. 
Uh, Juwan passed five carries, 14 yards. Uh, Maude Antoine, two carries, 13 yards. Quayshawn Bird led Bethune Cookman with 24 carries for 176 yards and a touchdown. Devin Black, six carries, 54 yards. Jimmy Robinson, seven carries, 15 yards and a touchdown. Trey John Spiller led, uh, led Prairie View with three catches for 114 yards and two touchdowns. Jalen Howard, one catch for 59 yards and a touchdown. Antonio Mullins, three catches for 51 yards. Kamari Everett continues to lead Bethune-Cookman in the in the receiving game with six catches for 115 yards and one touchdown. Daryl Powell, three catches, 67 yards. Cameron, o Cameron Overton, three catches, 42 yards. Troy James led Prairie View with 10 tackles. Warren Shankle, seven. Tahee Reese, six. Darius Campbell, five. Bryce Turner, five. Tariq Moore, five. And Travion Green with five. Tackles for loss. Dumas, two. Uh, Powell, one and a half. Reese, one. James, one. Harris, one. Shankle, half a tackle for loss. Presley, half a tackle for loss. And Glover, half a tackle for loss. Interception, I mean, excuse me, Sacks went to Dumas and James with one apiece. Shankle and Glover each had a half a sack apiece. Interceptions. Drake Cheatham had two on the night. Bethune Cookman was led in tackles by Ontario Johnson with nine. Keevan Thomas with seven. Uh, Hill Robinson and Reeves and Bowman each had four. Tackles for loss. Pearson with one. Thomas and Reeves had a half a tackle for loss and no sacks for Bethune Cookman and no interceptions. So this was, you know, this was a really good game. You know, these both teams really um, played well. And they um, they fought hard. You know, both teams fought hard and they played well. And Bethune Cookman just came up on the short end of the six. So back to the drawing board once again for Bethune Cookman. The schedule again gets no easier for them. They're gonna have a a, a tough task ahead of them as they um, as they move forward. This team is really in a in a tough way. They um, their season is going down the drains rapidly. And a winless season is definitely on the books for them. I mean, you know, uh, four games left, I believe. So not a lot ahead of them as far as wins on the schedule. So they're, they're reeling really bad. Purview continues to win and keep the pace of the West Division. Um, they have some tough divisional games ahead of them uh, in the upcoming weeks. So that game, uh, this game is a game that turned out the way that you Figured maybe the margin, not the, not what most of us figured, but the result was. And we move on to our next game of the night. Um, Southern went to Pine Bluff to take on the UAPB Golden Lions. And in a game that the margin of victory was definitely a surprise to me, and I'm sure quite a few people, uh, Southern defeated UAPB 34-7. This was a game I thought I predicted Southern to win, but I predicted like 31-30 game because I thought that Southern's defense um, was not playing very well, and they had been giving up a lot of yardage, and they really were having problems tackling teams and you know closing out teams and get completing drives and getting off the field. But Southern played a, probably their best game of the of the season. But don't cook, excuse me, UAPB is on a tremendous slide. Um, if it wasn't for Bethune Cookman, then UAPB would probably be the worst team in the league right now. This team is in disarray. They can't figure out a quarterback. Well, number one, they don't give a guy long enough to figure anything out. Um, Scholar Perry is not looking like the Scholar Perry of the spring. Um, he is very much struggling. He's making bad throws. He's not making good decisions. Uh, Xavier Vaughn come, comes in and he's making some plays here and there, but he isn't getting enough time to really de develop himself. Uh, the running game is not there right now. The defense, which was a staple um, of, the, of this team, got absolutely demolished by Southern's running game. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But this game was pretty much Southern from start to finish. Uh, Skylar Perry threw interception on Pombla's first drive. And Southern basically went on from there. Um, you know, obviously not, like I said, not a lot to take from this. Southern scored, obviously, the first 34 points of the game, and Pine Bluff scored a touchdown with a minute and 54 seconds left to avert a shutout. So this was a very disappointing game if you if you follow UAPB. Um, 
Southern scoring as many points obviously was not the surprise to me. The surprise with the defense playing as well as they did. Um, this can be obviously Palm Bluff's a team that's in you know they're just not not who they they're not who we thought they were. So it's not a lot to take away from this. But for a team like Southern to have a defensive effort like this this week is a good thing for them because even against teams like you know no offense but teams like Valley. Texas Southern and Miles, teams that Southern is more talented than, those teams had a lot of success moving the ball. So they were able to go on the road and get a very solid victory and um, keep themselves in the race for the division as they enter that brutal stretch for them um, at the end of the season. Uh, Southern ran the ball for 304 yards on the night, eight yards per carry, and three touchdowns. Uh, Pine Bluff ran the ball for 65 yards two yards per carry. They did get a touchdown. This running game for Pine Bluff continues to disappoint. They, they um, started off the season so well against Lane, and that rushing yardage per game number has dropped every week. Um, they they just cannot run the football. Uh, Southern was 10 or 17 passing for 69 yards. Southern did not have to throw the ball. There were very few situations that Pine Bluff put them in to, to where they had to throw. And um, when you let Southern play like this, they're going to win the majority of the time. You you definitely don't want Southern to have less than 25 passing attempts because if Southern is not throwing the ball that much, then that means the running game is working. And if the running game is working and the defense is playing well, then the odds are that you're probably not going to beat them. So Palm Bluff just did a poor job of, of forcing Southern into passing, passing situations. And um, – Southern just never really had to throw the ball. I mean, you know, a lot of times Southern threw it was they they it was just times that they threw it. They just they just never were really forced into too many situations. A lot of times they had some long down and distance, and they still ran for a first down. Uh, Pine Bluff defense just did not look good. Um, you give up this many yards on the ground to a team, and a lot of runs with guys up the middle untouched, uh, off the edge untouched, uh, 30, 40 yard touchdowns untouched. That's just that's not good defense. I think this team may have quit. Um, they just did not have any real fight to them. Um, you know, it was a lot of attention put on this game early um, because Palm Bluff, you know, stomped on the logo at Southern after they beat them in the spring. But, you know, I, I, I just don't think a lot of that was a factor into this game. Palm Bluff is just in a total disarray. And right now they're struggling mightily. Uh, 142 yards pass for Palm Bluff. Uh, 15 or 27, no touchdowns, four interceptions to a Southern defense that has not forced very many turnovers. Uh, you gave them four four uh, interceptions, 373 for Southern total offense, 6.8 yards per play. Uh, they fumbled once on a punt return, and they lost it. Pine Bluff, 207 total offense, 3.4 yards per play. They fumbled once on a kickoff return and lost it. Uh, eight penalties for Southern for 54 yards. Uh, they, I think they had five penalties in the first quarter and three the rest of the way. Pine Bluff, two penalties for 18 yards. Not a lot of penalties penalties in this game. Southern punted for a 31-yard average. Pine Bluff, 44-44.2-yard and 44 .2 yard average. Time of possession, Southern, 31 minutes and 46 seconds. Pine Bluff, 28 minutes and 46 seconds. I mean, 31 minutes and 14 seconds for Southern. 28-46 for Pine Bluff. Southern was 4 of 14 on third down. That's probably one of the few things that Southern did that, that you know, was not a good a good number. Pine Bluff, 3 of 12. 1 of 4 on fourth down for Southern. 2 for 3 for Pine Bluff on fourth down. 2 of 2 in the red zone for Southern. 1 for 4 for Pine Bluff. 3 sacks for Southern and 2 for Pine Bluff. Individually, like I said, uh, Bubba McDaniel, 9 of 15 for 58 yards. He was sacked twice. Uh, early in the game, uh, no interceptions, no touchdowns. Ladarius Skelton got his first action since the McNeese game. Uh, he was one of two for 11 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Xavier Vaughn, 11 of 20 for Pine Bluff, 87 yards, no touchdowns, one interception. He was like twice. Skylar Perry, uh, four for six for 55 yards, no touchdowns, two interceptions. He was like once. Nathan Stewart, 0 oh for one and an interception. Uh, rushing Southern, Kobe Dillon, 14 of 27, 267 yards, uh, three touchdowns, 
19.1 yards per carry. Uh, that 267 yards is a swag record. Obviously, it's a, it's a Southern single game record as well for rushing yardage in a game. Um, this kid is only a freshman, and he was a quarterback in high school. Um, was you know he was scouting quarterback in the spring, and you know coaches asked him you know if he wanted to play running back to get on the field, and now you know the kid is um, running the ball tremendously well. Um, he has this is his second hundred plus yard game. He uh, almost had a hundred yards against Texas Southern. The week before, but three touchdowns, uh, 40, 45, and 75 yards untouched on all three. That, as a defense, that's just that should never happen. Uh, one, one, you know, one burst up the middle untouched is, you know, is, is reprehensible, but you can let it go. Uh, two, eh, three, it just was horrible. Um, Pound Love defense, I thought was a better defense against the run. They had no interest in tackling in this game. Um, I really think they I really think they quit. I mean, I hate to say that. That's a strong word to use for a team, but I think on this night, I think the defense just was not up to the task. Uh Craig Nelson, 10 carries, 36 yards. Uh Kier Crossley led Pine Blue with 14 carries for 35 yards. The Warren Miller, two carries, 17 yards. Tavon Britton, two carries, eleven yards. Uh, Xavier Vaughn had nine carries for uh three yards and he did have one touchdown. Chandler Whitfield led Southern with two catches for 23 yards. Jamar Washington, four catches, 19 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Marquise McClain, one catch for 13 yards. Dalen Hill led Palm Bluff with three catches for 44 yards. Uh, Trey Harrell, three catches, 20 yards. Josh Brooks, three catches, 18 yards. Um, your top three, your top two receivers going to combine uh, four, four catches for 26 yards is not going to win you very many games. Something has to be done for Palm Bluff. Uh, Ray Anderson led Southern with five tackles. Brian Jordan, four tackles. Jordan Eastland, four tackles. Chase Foster, four tackles. Kobe Jones, four tackles. Kenan Tate, four tackles. Cameron Peterson, four tackles. Tackles for loss. Peterson, two. Barber, two. Anderson, two. Ream, one. Farmer, one. And Square, one. Uh, Sacks, Anderson, two. And Barber with one. Chase Foster had three sack, three interceptions for Southern and one for Glenn Brown. Jalen Thigpen led Palm Bluff with six tackles. Kobe Watts, five. Nathan Stewart, Nathan Stewart, five. Uh, Askew, four. Reeves, four. Beard, four. Aikens, four. And Peppers with four. Tackles for loss. Uh, Peppers, Davis, Reeves, Gray, Bentley, each had one. Hamilton, Thigpen, Watts, and Woods each had a half a tackle for loss. Sacks went to Gray, ha Davis. Gray with one, Davis and Hamilton each had a half a half a sack apiece. And that's it for Pine Blow. So this season, I, I would say this season is over for these guys. Um they obviously they can, you know, they are they can turn this around, but I don't know if they have any interest in turning it around on um, Doc Gamble really has a lot of work ahead of him. Um for a team that was so successful in the spring. Um, to drop down this far is kind of um, is it's kind of showing that maybe the spring wasn't what a lot of people thought it was. That's a couple of things that people have been saying recently that maybe the spring wasn't really as as it it could be as it appeared to a lot of people for some teams. So I really um I really question where Pine Bluff goes from here. This is um a tough a tough task for them. They put themselves in a really tough position. And I don't know if they're going to be able to get themselves out of it. So we move on from this game to the SWAC East winner and SWAC champ of the spring, who is also in a, in a tailspin. And this was a game that I, I would say it was choked away. Alabama and them lost to FAMU 35-31. This game, uh, FAMU jumped up to a 7 nothing lead. Alabama and them uh, went into the half of 14-10. And with eight minutes and 21 seconds to go in the third quarter, Alabama and them led this game 28 to 10. And from that point on, uh, FAMU would outscore them to win this game by a margin of 35 31. So this was just, you know, this was a game that, fam, that FAMU was kind of not really getting it done. The AM offense was moving the ball, the defense was playing well. Um, I listened to this game a little bit on the, on the radio. 
the AM announcers were really feeling it. Um, it looked like they were going to exercise their demons from the last two games. And then, lo and behold, FAMU was able to start to pressure Alabama and them and the AM defense, the Bulldog defense that we all know and love showed up and um, got gashed. And again, allowed a season high in yardage and a season high in points. They kept that streak going. Um, so that's, you know, that's an unfortunate thing for this defense. Um, they look like they had this, this game under control and they let it get away from them. And fam, you was able to stay the course um, and, and pick up a, a big victory for them. 273 on the ground for fam, you that, that's uh, obviously a season high, I believe, for them rushing 7.4 yards per carry, uh, two touchdowns, AM 97 yards rushing, two touchdowns, three yards per carry. Florida and them 21 of 35. Three touchdowns, one interceptions through the air, 251 yards. Alabama and them 16 of 36. One touchdown, one interception, 199 yards. Total offense, FAMU, 524 yards, 7.3 yards per carry. They did fumble once and lost it. 11 penalties for 183 yards. That's definitely got to be cleaned up. Uh, Alabama and them 296 on the night. 4.4 yards per play, no fumbles, but they did have 11 penalties for 104 yards, so a highly penalized game between both teams. FAMU 44 yard average per punt. Alabama and them punted 10 times in this game. That is a crazy number. Uh, 300, I mean, 388 yards punting, 38 yard average. FAMU, time of possession, 29 minutes and 8 seconds. Alabama and them 30 minutes and 52 seconds. Fam, you were three of thirteen on third down, and them two of sixteen, two of four for the for the Rattlers on fourth down, three of three for the Bulldogs, three of five in the red zone for Fam, you two of two for Alabama and them, and uh, the Rattlers had four sacks, and A and M had none, and that that is the key. I mean, getting pressure on glass is is where it's at. Uh, teams are starting to figure that out. And he is having a really rough time these last three weeks handling pressure. Uh, Rashawn McKay, 21 of 34 on the night, 251 yards, three touchdowns, and one interception. Really a good night for him. I know a lot of us have talked um, poorly about McKay. Um, he hasn't been the best. Um, he's been a game manager the last few weeks. And a lot of people still remember that Jackson State game where he just did not look good. But you got to give him his flowers on this night. I thought he played a tremendous game. Um, especially with the team behind on the road um, and things weren't going well. But, you know, he was able to make some plays. He had a couple of really nice touchdowns. Um, actually, one touchdown was a tremendous, amazing catch uh, by Chad Hunter. And the, the Rattlers just, they're playing really good football. And them, Alabama and them is on the opposite end of this right now. Uh, Glass 16 or 36. Uh, one touchdown, one interception, 199 yards. He was sacked like four times in this game. That's less than 10, but still not a good number for your quarterback if he's taking hits. Uh, Bishop Barnett, 17 carries, 187 yards for the Rattlers. One touchdown, 80-yard run. Terrell Jennings, 19 carries, 80, 82 yards and one touchdown. Garrett Qualls, 23 carries, 96 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Troy Lind 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 Lindbay. One carry for 17 yards, and that's pretty much it for the Bulldogs. Hunter, five catches, 71 yards, and a touchdown for the Rattlers. Uh, Sherrod, six catches, 53 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, Sanders, 32 catches, 32 yards on two catches. Manigo, four catches, 25 yards. Oduhalair, four catches, 65 yards for AM. Uh, Ibrahim, four catches, 52 yards, and a touchdown. Moore, three catches, 42 yards. Henry Johnson, four catches, 33 yards. Marquise Bell led the Rattlers with 10 tackles. Savon Williams and Darius Sagan, each seven tackles. Six tackles for B.J. Bowler and Gentle Hunt. Collier with four tackles. Tackles for loss. Hunt, two and a half. Bowler, two. Williams, two. Land, one and a half. Uh, Dante, Deontay Williams, Justin Cook, Marquise Bell, and Mayweather with one apiece. Sack, two for Hunt. Williams. And Williams, Williams and Williams, the law firm, they each had one sack apiece. Uh, interception, uh, Morgan had the interception for the Rattlers. 
Trenell Troutman, who is probably the only guy for a who is really doing anything this year on defense. He had eight tackles on the night. Holloway, seven. Strokes, seven. McNeil, seven. Uh, Kinnick, five. Riley and Callaway. Uh, Bailey and Hopkins each had four. Tax for loss, Troutman, two. McNeil, one. Hopkins and Austin Robinson and, and Carter each had a half a tackle for loss apiece. No sack. And the interception went to Riley. So, as I said, Alabama and them, I, you know, I, I basically, for all intents and purposes, their season is over. Um, they are pretty much out of the race for the division. So, to go from swag champs in the spring to out of the race by October, by the middle of October, is a tremendous fall. Three losses in a row. Uh, two of those losses, you know, could possibly be expected at the beginning of the season. Uh, the Grambling loss is still unexpected, but those games have followed the same blueprint. The offense is just not getting it done, and the defense is has been subpar, um, probably to say the least. And that's been their biggest struggle is defensively. They can't stop anybody. And if your offense cannot consistently move the ball and you can't keep your quarterback upright, then you're going to get beat majority of the time. So not a lot to say about the Bulldogs. The Rattlers continue to roll. They're playing really well. This game looked like it was going to be a loss. They fought and fought and kept themselves in it and got the W. So tremendous number for FAMU and Alabama and them. And Connor and Manor, man, y'all got some work to do ahead of y'all. Um, a bye week for y'all this week, so y'all may be able to sort some things out uh, heading into the Magic City Classic. Speaking of the East Division and the uh, leaders, uh, Jackson State picked up a homecoming win, 28-7, to in front of uh, 55,000 people at, at the stadium. Um, really nice crowd, um, amazing turnout for Jackson State. Um, the Tigers are doing what they have to do first half was kind of iffy. Alabama State kept themselves in this game. Uh, it was 7-7 at the half. And then Jackson State finally were able to put some things together and um, put this game away to a margin that most people pretty much figured um, that it would end up in the 20-plus point range. Alabama State played a really good first half. Um, offensively, they just don't have – they don't have anybody that scares you. And against a defense like Jackson State, that's tough. You know, you have to be able to challenge them some way, somehow, and they just can't do it. Uh, they just don't have the weapons. But their defense is, is faulty enough to keep them in this game, and that was what I figured, that the defense would keep them in it, and then they probably would wear it out in the second half, and Jackson State would find some success. Uh, 40 yards rushing for the Hornets, 1.6 yards per carry, no touchdowns, 149 yards for Jackson State. 3.9 yards per carry and two touchdowns. Passing 117 yards for Alabama State, 9 or 26. Uh, one touchdown, no interceptions. 17 or 29 for Jackson State, 201. Uh, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Jackson State, uh, 350 total offense, 5.2 yards per play. They fumbled twice and lost one. They had eight penalties for 65 yards. Alabama State, 157 yards of total offense. Jackson State basically just completely shut them down. 3.1 yards per play. They fumbled once and lost it. They didn't lose it. They had 11 penalties for 93 yards. So no, uh, only one turnover in this game. But that um, Jackson State just did what they had to do. Their defense is just smothering. And Alabama State offense is just non-existent at most times. I mean, they did have a good game. Uh, last week against Pine Bluff, but this week Jackson State just really smothered them. They punted, uh, the Hornets also punted 10 times today for 34 yard average. Jackson State punted five times for 29 yard average. Time of possession 25 minutes and 54 seconds for Alabama State, 34 minutes and six seconds for Jackson State, four of 14 for Alabama State, five of 12 for Jackson State. Um, that third down conversion rate for Jackson State, I like to see it a little bit higher, but you know, that defense keeps them out of a lot of jams that the offense may put them in. One for two for Jackson State on fourth down. Uh 0 for 0 for 0 for Alabama State on fourth down. Hornets one for one in the red zone. Jackson State two or three. Alabama State had three sacks on the night. Jackson State one sack. So Alabama State at least did a good job of 
protecting their quarterback. Um, they just could not move the ball. So that was just, you know, something that did them in. Uh, Miles Crowley, 9 of 26, 117 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions, and one sack. Dua Sanders, 17 of 29, 201 on the night, two touchdowns, no interceptions. He was sacked three times. Ezra Gray, 14 carries for 27 yards. Um, the running game, man, I, I, there was a lot of high hopes for Gray and Merritt, and they have yet to really have a good game this year. So, again, time is running out for some of these teams to start to try to find some kind of success doing what people expected them to do before the season. Uh, Santee Marshall, 24 carries, 96 yards and a touchdown. J.D. Martin, 5 carries, 43 yards and a touchdown. Heron Jones led Alabama State with four catches for 72 yards. Jeremiah Hickson, three catches, 30 yards and a touchdown. Keith Corbin led Jackson State with seven catches for 113 yards and a touchdown. Malachi Wideman, six catches, 74 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Cole Pepper led Alabama State with seven tackles. Ershaw Davis, six. Jeffrey Scott, Webster, uh, Rompersad, Cunningham, Tar and Tarver each had four tackles. Tackles for loss. Johnson, two. Davis, one. Howard, a half a tackle for loss. And Long, a half a tackle for loss. Sacks, Johnson with two and Davis with one. Jackson State was led by Keontae Hampton with nine tackles. James Houston with five tackles. Uh, C.J. Holmes, three tackles. Warren, three tackles. Stillman Craig, three tackles. Davis, three tackles. And Owens, three tackles. Tackles for loss. Hampton with two. Houston with two. Davis, one and a half. Owens, one. And Hobson with a half a tackle for loss. Uh, Houston had a sack. And this was, like I said, this was a typical Jackson State game this year. Offense, you know, does enough defense, mothers the opponent. And they... Go, they win the game going away. So both teams are pretty much – this was a game that was pretty much going the way that most people thought it would. And uh, this was no surprise. Jackson State did what they had to do. Alabama State still has some questions. Um, Coach Hill Ely continues to ride that hot seat. Um, so we'll see how that turns out. I think next, I think the Magic City Classic may be his undoing. Um, he may be able to save his job if they win that game. But at the same time, if they lose that game, he, he may be out at, at some point. So let's just take a really quick look at the Week 8 schedule, and then we're going to go ahead and get on up out of here. Um, week 8 has Arkansas Pine Bluff playing the University of Arkansas in Little Rock, uh, Bethune-Cookman at Jackson State, Florida and them at Valley, um, Prairie View at Southern. That's our homecoming at Southern, 6 o'clock kickoff in that game. ESPN Plus at All Corn at Texas Southern at seven o'clock AT and T Sports Net. So pretty much no, uh, uh, the biggest game of the week pretty much is Southern and Prairie View. Um, that's a, a an elimination game for Southern. If they lose that game, they are out of the West race. So that's a big game. It's homecoming. Should be a really great crowd on the bluff. And uh, other than that, Bethune Cookman is most likely gonna continue their slide. Um, that FAMU Valley game, I think. Badly will play hard. Uh, Take Southern Alcorn before the Grambling game. Maybe I thought Alcorn would be challenging a little bit more. But we'll review, you know, we'll recap, we'll preview these games on Wednesday in depth. And um, with that being said, man, like I said, I'm about to go ahead and get on up out of here. Y'all enjoy y'all Sunday. Um, week week eight preview coming, coming Wednesday. Uh, live edition Swag Smoke as usual on Thursday. Week eight recap on Sunday. So that's pretty much the week in a nutshell. Um, so everybody enjoy your week, and I will holler at y'all on Wednesday. We out.